Welcome to Hoop Earrings Conversations. I'm your host, Lori vasquez Scalari. In this episode, I will share five tips from this cancer survivor that helped me not only keep cancer away, but I am healthier than I have ever been. Get your hoops on. Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday is upon us, and he once said, Of all the forms of inequality, injustice in health is the most shocking and inhumane. Did you know that the biggest indicator of how long you will live is based on your zip code? So low-income folks of color have the lowest life expectancy rates for a few reasons. The first reason is poor access to quality health care. And I know a little bit about this because I grew up without insurance myself because my mom clean houses for a living. And I didn't actually have access to health insurance until my first real job after college at 25 years old. Another reason is high exposure to hazardous environments. So for most of my life, I've had problems with my thyroid. In fact, me, my mom, my sister, we are all on thyroid supplements. And this makes sense because prevalence rates and the risk of having thyroid disease is significantly higher in areas with high pesticide use, with a 49% greater risk of hypothyroidism. And I grew up in the agricultural area of the Salinas Valley, and pesticides were constantly being sprayed over our community. There's a lot more statistics to share, um, but those two relate to my, my story. So one thing that I've learned in my health journey is that you basically we need to take control of our own health in preventative ways because the system will not save us, especially in low income communities of color. So I have a long history of health issues and I'll just tell you a few, but I had Lyme disease for 15 years. Um, and I also went through breast cancer and uh, got through 25 rounds of radiation, hypothyroidism with Hashimoto's disease. And I just have had a lot of random symptoms that were have been uncomfortable, too many to list here. But here's the amazing news. I am cancer free and I am healthier than I've ever been and I feel better than I've ever been. So here are my personal tips for how I keep cancer away and how I stay young and healthy from the inside out. So before I get into this list of tips, I have to say this. This statement has not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. My statements are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. My statements are intended only to augment a particular therapy or drug action that is intended to diagnose, mitigate, treat, cure, or prevent a disease or class of diseases. All right, ready to get into it? Okay, here we go. Um, Tip number one is that here's what I know. I can't control everything in my life, but I can control what I put into my body. And my mom used to say, Lori, your body is a temple, do not ruin the temple. But (laughs) what you can do is control what you put in your body that is custom fit for your needs. So don't get caught up in the marketing of some commercial you saw and think that it will cure your problems. So tip number one is determine what foods and supplements you should be eating that is specific to you and how you feel. There is no one size fits all. So you'll have to experiment until you understand what works for you. And you might be thinking, but this supplement is backed by research. But did you know that clinical trials are done on white men, in some cases up to 90%. Yet people of color will ultimately take the drugs that come out of these studies. And they're sometimes done on mice, but one thing I know is this, I ain't a man and I ain't a mouse. So what I recommend is two cost-effective methods to determine what works best for you. The first thing that you can try is the elimination diet. And here is how that works. Say you have some ongoing symptom like nausea, heartbeat, indigestion, upstate stomach, diarrhea. (laughs) That's for my brother Ricky. It's his favorite song. It's a Pepto-Bismol commercial. An elimination diet involves removing foods from your diet that you suspect your body cannot tolerate well. And there's a list of the main culprits like wheat, corn, etc. And then what you do is one by one, you reintroduce those and see which one of them makes the diarrhea come back. (laughs) And that's the one that you're most likely allergic to. That's one way you can get to the bottom of it. The second thing that has worked for me is muscle testing. And if you look it up, here's what you'll likely see. There's no research that says it works. 
Well, here's what I have to say to that. Note that many communities of color used to rely on grandma's hands to heal us. So for me, each time I would visit my abuelita in Mexico as a kid, I got sick from the change in the food. And she would give me tea that had like sticks and herbs in it that she got from the curandero to heal me. And it worked each time. So remember, through colonization, we have lost many of our community healers and herbalists. There's that. Okay, muscle testing is a form of applied kinesiology where basically you hold an herb or a supplement and um, you could either do it yourself or you could have a practitioner do it for you. They're called an applied kinesiologist. And they test your muscles and see if your muscles get weaker or stronger based on that herb. And then that's how you determine if that herb is a good fit for you. Based on everything that I know, here's what I do to support my own health. I take a high quality vitamin D and B12 supplement in liquid form every day. I also take a thyroid supplement, herbal. I also drink a half gallon to a gallon of water every day, but I add in electrolytes to make sure I'm getting all the minerals from my body. And I mostly eat a whole foods diet that is not processed. So that means um, like when you see something on a label and you're like, I don't know what that word is or recognize it, it's more than likely a processed food. And then I mostly avoid oil, especially canola, corn, and vegetable. And when I cook, I pretty much always use olive oil. I also avoid refined sugars and flours. And I eat a lot of protein more than any other macro because we need that for muscle tone and we are losing muscles as we age. I basically don't follow the standard American diet, SAD as acronym. And instead I um, eat basically whole foods, a lot of vegetables, a lot of protein. And there was a study they did comparing the standard diet for American diet to the Mediterranean diet. And they basically looked at the brain scans of 50 year olds and found that those that were on the SAD diet had more brain lesions and their brains were smaller and deteriorating at a faster rate. And that's signs of dementia. Tip number two is intermittent fasting. The Western way of eating is that you eat three meals a day plus a snack. And intermittent fasting is common among communities of color, including Muslims, Jewish folks, Buddhists, and more. But basically, if you what you do is you eat all of your food within a shorter time frame. So here's how I do it. I basically skip breakfast and I eat between noon and 8 p.m. And I eat anything that I want, um, within the confines of what I just listed, but I eat a lot and then I don't eat any snacks after 8 p.m. and then I fast for 16 hours. Now, when you do this, here's what happens to your body. Your cells initiate cell repair and what happens is it turns, it goes, your body goes into something called apophagy, where the cells digest and remove old dysfunctional proteins that are built up inside your cells, AKA keeps cancer away. And also it changes some functions in your body that increase longevity and protect against other diseases. So the other bonus is intermittent fasting is a major fat burner. So if you want to lose weight, I would recommend this. So for women, there's two books that I recommend. This one is Fast Like a Girl by Dr. Mindy Pelez. And then the second one I would recommend is Intermittent Fasting Formation by Transformation <laughs> by Cynthia Thurlow. And women have to intermittent fast differently because we have a complex hormone system. So check those books out. Um, but men, I would recommend watching videos by Dr. Eric Berg. I'll put all the links below to all of this. Okay, tip number three lift weights. By the time you are in your 40s, most of us are starting to lose major muscle mass at about 5% uh, per decade. If you lift muscles, it improves bone density, it decreases the chances of osteoporosis, and then as we age, our metabolism slows, so lifting weights improves metabolism. It also boosts your mood, so it's shown to decrease depression, and then you look damn good, so lift weights, people. Tip number four, breathe. For thousands of years, Eastern cultures have used breath as a powerful force for healing. In fact, it's known to boost your immune system because it stimulates your lymphatic system, which is how cancer moves around your body. It also improves digestion and that it improves your sleepy, sleeping habits. <laughs> um, all right, last tip number five is visualize a new future. When I was in high school, I ran hurdles 
And my coach taught me something that the Olympic athletes actually do is they practice visualizing running the races and they see a specific time that they want to make and they do all this while they're sitting down. And what happens is their muscles contract as if they were actually running. So she had me do it and it worked. I went to state competition and hurdles with that method. When I got cancer, I used this method to visualize a new future for myself. And now I use it to visualize anything I want to see in my life, including having optimum health. If you are struggling with your health, use this technique to visualize a healthier you. And here is what I do pretty much almost every night. I go into YouTube and I type meditation for optimum health. And there are tons of powerful meditations. And many times I fall asleep um, kind of blissfully dreaming about my new future. So I would highly recommend that. Okay, to summarize, my five tips for how to stay healthy from the inside out. Tip number one, determine what foods or supplements that you should be eating that fit specifically for your body. Tip number two, intermittent fasting. Tip three, lift weights. Four, breathing exercises. And five, visualize the future through guided imagery. In the end, we need to take control of our own health because the system is disproportionately not serving all of our communities, especially low-income communities of color. And you know what I have to say to this? Quisieron enterrarnos, pero se les olvidó que somos semillas. They tried to bury us, but they forgot that we are seeds. Let's rise up. Let's fight the power, literally, to stay alive. This episode is dedicated to my cousin Jen, who I know is wowing the angels up there with her usher moves. Girl could dance. And so for many of you who I know are going through a health battle right now, and specifically cancer, I'm thinking about you, Trisha. Girl, you got this. And like Heavy D once said, I got nothing but love for you. <laughs>